It was then that the manager informed the players individually who would be playing and who wouldn't. Gary Chivers was being recalled to the sides. Um, I'm going to I'm going to bring you back, Gary. Put you in the team. I'm going to play you at the back. Yeah. Um, play you alongside Mark and Alec. I'm going to push Desi in and uh, just in really wide because I think if we go against these and try and um, it, yeah. then it will suit them down the ground. I want to just play. I want to try and play as much as possible. So we're playing so three centre halves? Yeah, I'm going to play with a three centre yeah. half. but I want, really, when we get the ball, to only play three at the back Yeah. and push the other two right on and stay right wide right, yeah. and look to keep the ball as much as possible. Yeah. All right, Neil, sir? Excellent. Brilliant. What have you got to say? Uh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> the game plan had been set, the tactics for this particular match had been designed, but they left no room for striker Steve Fletcher in the starting lineup, despite his impressive performances in the two previous games against York City and Blackpool. Steve, I'm going to leave you out, mate. I'm going to, I'm going to make you sub. Um, I'm just, I've just said the cheers now. I'm going to go really with two small ones up front because they got, a, you know, they landed a giant here. And I think if we. You know, when we do play you, we tend to hit you and want to want to play with you. And I think that just suit them down to the ground. I'm going to play Cops and uh, Warren up front and see how it goes. Obviously, make you sub Fletch. Yeah. You've done brilliant in the two in the last two games. There ain't been a problem in that respect. I've just looked at them and thought this is the way really for us to get a result. I know it's you know disappointing for yourself, but for the team. Come right, on, mate. Cool is that, Tony? Yeah, it's difficult because he's done well over the last, you know, the last two games was probably his best games. But you know, every, you, you pick really a team to win a game, and that, you know, certain players have got to got to accept that they might be sacrificed for the for the team. Chibs is a good lad, you know. I'm sure he'll come in and do well with Fletch. He's was he 21 years of age, and and to be fair to him, he's a game honest uh, lad who I, I do really really like. And uh, to leave him out is difficult, but he's a good lad. He, you know, I could bring him back in on Tuesday against um, Huddersfield, and he must probably respond in the right way. Well, I know he will respond in the right way. It was 10 minutes to two. The players and manager returned to the sanctuary of the dressing room. Arriving onto the pitch was Vice Chairman Brian Willis. He was keen to stress the confidence the board of directors had in their manager. Tony, we think he's done really well. Bearing in mind the, the situation when he took he took over at the club, we were um, fighting against a problem with the bank finance and that. There was no money to spend, and he's come in. He knew it was no money to spend when he came in. He took on the job, and uh, uh, over the last two years, he's done a lot of donkey work and, and dirty work, reducing the the playing staff. We've had we've had to do reduce the the overheads. We've done extremely well, and. Uh, just this week, obviously, we just uh, sold Joe to Everton and uh, uh, got in some money from that, that deal and made a, a good profit on it. But notwithstanding that, a lot of that money, half that money goes to the bank, 30% goes to Wigan, so there will be some money to spend. I mean, there won't be a lot of money in the kitty, but we, we gave the undertaking to Tony that if we sell a player, he will have proportion that money to buy in a new player. Because from a support's point of view, he's been under a bit of pressure, hasn't he, recently? He has been under a, uh, a bit of pressure recently because, uh, although I think at times we've been playing reasonably well, we haven't been scoring goals. And, of course, the supporters want to see us score goals and see us win. I mean, I'm hoping it's going to turn around and uh, things will improve. I'm looking forward to next season because Tony's been with us two seasons. He said it would take three years. And I think Tony really wants to have a go at it next year and see if we can turn it round and really get, get up there among the playoffs, if not get promotion. Yes, that's the team will be winning goals. Chibs, Mark and Alec. The manager informed the team as a whole about the lineup he was to deploy. We were an hour away from the match itself. It's an hour which usually remains unseen or unheard. The dressing room preparations, which Tony Pulis and his players were kind enough to let me share, were to prove a fascinating experience. The early team talk finished, the players began to get changed. Most then went back out onto the pitch for an extended warm-up. Striker Steve Cottrell, though, was on Sean O'Driscoll's treatment bench, getting a troublesome ankle strapped up. He had been given the go-ahead to return to the side, having recovered from a hamstring injury. Well, it's obviously, you know, good to get back in the side. Uh, just hope everything goes all right and you manage to finish the game. We get a decent result. Any problems with the injury? Well, yeah, I mean, it's not quite right, but I'm um, just hoping, you know, that we're going to, I can get through the game with it and, and hopefully playing the game might uh, bring it back to life a little bit. It's all about these moments before kick-off. What's going through the mind? What's going through my mind now? I don't know. <laughs> it's 
Steve Fletcher's just saying the point of lager in the background, but you know what he's like. There was a relaxed atmosphere with half an hour to go. No one seemed more relaxed, though, than striker Warren Aspinall, reading the Daily Mirror while his colleagues were out on the pitch warming up. Yeah, very relaxing. I just read the paper. I don't usually go out for a warm. I usually warm up in here about half past and just do my stretches. And what have you been doing this morning as, as the kick-off approaches? Went to the bookies with Gary Timbers. We always go over to the bookies Saturday morning, have a little bet. And I don't know what went to the centre. What do you bet on? Uh, today I bet the football. Football bet I used to do. Stockport, I mean. Bournemouth to beat If you get caught having to chase fancies out wide, or the other like Murray, or Gannon, just, let, just let them go. And fill While the Aspinall was reading the paper, the manager Tony Pulis, for the only time in the whole weekend, sat quietly in the corner, scribbling notes. They were individual instructions as to which player would do what job when they were attacking and when they were defending. The planning was meticulous. Just to say to you and Desi, if you get on the ball quickly from Zoe's, let's do it quick. <coughs> Fifteen minutes to go. The team were all back in the changing room. The talking was becoming louder. Hey, get up against your man and work with him, definitely. The motivation was slowly becoming more apparent. Rose. Come on, man. You're the one for us today. You're the one for us today, Bruce. Loads of you got free responsibility, Bruce, to find spaces. Steadily, the tension grew. Come on, boys. Come on. Good wishes were being handed round. Gary Chivers was repeatedly to be heard encouraging his teammates. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. I... Tony Pulis continually reminded his players of his plans for victory. Can we defend, lads? Listen, defensively, I saw all you're talking about today is being bright on the second ball. That's all I'm saying. Don't worry about winning the first ball. Be nice and bright on the second one so they don't get flicks and they don't get runners in. Don't Ten minutes left. Tony Pulis's voice had reached shouting level. So you're nice and bright with it. When we get it, lads, we've got to play early. Get it down and pass it early. But I need runners. I'm not I'm not going out there today, lads, and with tip tap Charlie's in front. I want some penetration. The sound of studs on the dressing room floor gave away the nervous tapping of feet. Bruce Lisha man, he's gonna be spare. Shove it down his throat, lads. Shove it down his throat. Four minutes before they were to leave the changing room, any fan who wondered whether their team really cared about the game they had paid to see should have been standing where I was, shivering with excitement and motivation, ready myself to challenge the Stockport players for every ball. Four minutes before we go. Four minutes. Come on, Alec. It was an incredible experience. Steadily as the referee's bell calling the teams out approached, the management team wound their players up. Come on. Now, just enjoy it. Just do things quick. The minds were being concentrated. We need a few voices out there, man. Come on, boys. Come on. James, we need a few voices out there. The will to win was being inspired. Hey, listen to me. A minute before we go out, listen, lads. Listen, if you don't match them, they're a physical team. If you don't match them, lads, not worth going out there. You may as well stay in here now. Get a match them. Hey, they. Tackles, Burnsy, tackles. Hey, the winners in the team, do your tackles and give it to the people who can play. People who can do things then. But unless you win the battle, you ain't got a chance. You may as well stay in here. All the best, come on, boy. All the best, come on. Come on, come on, come on. The manager had said his final words. The players were left with his plans, his desire for victory, his desperate ambition to prove that Bournemouth can compete with the best. Enjoy it, just. Stick in those spaces, mate. The dressing room door was opened by Captain Alex Watson. He led the team into the corridor. Come on, boys. They were to turn right into the tunnel leading onto the pitch, and on the opposite side of that tunnel, the Stockport players waited. Come on, boys. Come on, lads. Let's get wide in, eh? Then the referee decided it was time, and he led the two sides out into the Edgeley Park Arena. While his team were marching out onto the pitch, Tony Pulis waited in the dressing room, calming himself down after his energetic team talk. As he left for the touchline dugout, he wished opposite number Danny Begara all the best. Then Tony Pulis walked out the tunnel himself, ready to take his place on the away team bench.